Hello Dojo friends. I'm really excited today to go over an update on this classical chart that we have been working on here at the Dojo for almost four years, the past four years, solid, with only about two to three breaks that we took for a vacation. Each one of these lines on this chart, if you go back on our channel from a few years ago, you can see and up the first update. This is the second that I'm doing. We had a lot of people ask, where are you on that chart? Did you finish? When did you finish? Are you ever gonna finish? I love this. This is probably maybe half of what we teach here at the dojo. Now these are just the basics on this chart. We have an entire six lineages that we teach here at the dojo. There are nine total, but six are quite active. This is what we call the Tenshi Jin no Maki. And this is basically a blueprint that Hatsumi Sensei created back in the 1970s. As far as I know, Takamatsu Sensei also had a version of this, and then Hatsumi kind of made it his own. Here is a book called Togakure Ryuninpo Taijutsu. This is just one version. There are several of these. I used to have the purple book back in the 1980s. My first copy I got when I was about 14 years old. This is one version of this chart and there are other people who have interpreted this chart in different ways to fit their dojo and what they do. I am using Arnaud's version here which is called the Kuma Dojo Tenshi Jin because Arno has added some really good stuff on top of Hatsumi's to get a little more of a flavor of this organization and its martial art. Now I have teaching credentials in several martial arts and this is one of them that I have been with since I was mm, 11 years old. 1981 is when I first found out about the Bujinkan and then I kind of wove my way into it as a young boy, continued went in to do other martial arts, came back to this much later when I wanted more depth. And as I go over this chart, a lot of this will seem foreign and kind of overwhelming to see all of the different things that we study. And it can be overwhelming. It's like diving into an ocean. With each step you take on the shore, you get deeper and deeper as you go. And there is a way to understand this chart. So my challenge and task was at our school as the teacher is I said we are going as a unit of students to go through this entire chart no matter how long it takes us. I don't know of anyone else or maybe a couple, a handful that have done it in this way. I'm not talking going over the chart, you know, a line every 10 minutes. I'm talking, I, we take each one of these principles and we go over it for one hour every single week, nonstop. It's called Tuesday Tenchi Jin classes here at the dojo, and they go from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. every single Tuesday, nonstop. We started this chart back in the mid 2020s, 2020, and it's now almost 2024, and we haven't finished yet. So let me close in just a little bit to show you what we've gone over. This is inspiring, I love this. This part here called the Ten Ryaku no Maki, this has to do with the principles of heaven, so to speak. This is where you start on the chart and it's basically before you even encounter an opponent. It's how to get your body ready with Taijutsu to get the skills that we need to defend ourselves and our family, etc. And of course, there's a lot of psychological principles in here that we can use as philosophy to get through life. So I don't know if you can see that. What I'm going to do is zoom in just a little bit for you. The first thing people ask is, where do I get that chart? You can get this free online. There are PDFs available of this. What I did is I took the PDF and I enlarged it with a printer into this massive chart here that we consult all the time. So let me go over the 10 Ryaku no Maki very quickly for you. And remember, we have done an hour on each one of these lines. The first thing you start with the 10 Ryaku, it's like the, um, the scroll of heaven. It has to do, as I said before, with before you even encounter an opponent. 
What are we preparing for? These are the basics, the kihon, what we call the fundamentals of all Budo, all martial arts. This is very old stuff coming from the samurai martial arts of Japan. So here we go. We start with, excuse, I'll move these swords here. Start with kamai. Everything starts with your stance. How do you hold your body in position? We have a kamai seminar this Saturday, actually, that deals exactly with this. We went over all of the kamai. Here there are just nine versions with a couple of bullet points with different modifications of kamai. Because any stance that you're in, you're always modifying it going from one to the other. This kind of transition ihen is when I move from one stance to the other to defend myself. So we have all the different kamai, all the sitting stances here, all of the standing ones, all of the middle transitional kamai. There are many more kamai than this, but these are plenty for a lifetime of study. Each one of these, you can see there are nine here. So that's um, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's about 15 weeks worth of work we did here. Taihenjutsu ukemigata is how you receive the ground, how you receive attacks, how you receive insults and things like that. How can I use my body and my mind and my brain to just kind of go with the flow, go with the flow, nagare, go with the flow. So this is how you use your body, all of these movements here. How you do front rolls, back rolls, side rolls, uh, hand springs, things like that. Uh, how to leap and use your body to move. I'm always talking about a chess board, so when you're fighting somebody, you're on kind of a matrix board, and when you look at the floor, you can actually see how a chess board is set up. Which square do I move to? Am I gonna backpedal? Am I gonna go forward? Am I gonna go laterally, diagonally? So this teaches you how to move your feet, sabaki, how to solve an issue coming at you using footwork. So that's an incredible amount of Junan Taiso stretching flexibility and how to use your body to, when you get thrown by someone, you can't get hurt. When you uh, fall down, when you trip down the stairs and the ice and the snow, you learn how to curl up and tuck your body and breathe properly so that you don't get injured. This is one of the major skills of the ninja, the shinobi, and the samurai being in heavy armor, you had to defend how you absorb things. Also how I defend against punches, kicks, etc. So this here is a massive area for beginners to learn how to do this. Of course, depending on your age and things like that, your body type, we modify this to you. You don't, you aren't expected at age 65 to do a handspring and then a back tumble and a triple leap. That makes no sense. You have to use your body and how it's, it is currently to try to do these principles for you. So the martial art, unlike many others, tailors to you. You don't tailor to it, if that makes sense. After all of this, we learn how to defend ourselves and absorb, block, counter, deflect different types of punches and kicks coming at our body. How to move your feet first, get the heck out of the way, then if you can't get out of the way, how do I damage the opponent and counter strike? Ukenagashi, how to receive. So you have the high, middle, low principles. You have A, B, C, D, and E, which I taught last year up in Dayton. You have how to absorb an attack, how to block, how to counter, how to deflect, how to evade, A, B, C, D, and E. Each one of these we took an hour on, each one, each A, B, C, and we learned when someone's punching you how to do the following things. That took quite a while. Ski thrusting, how do you punch? How do you move your body? How do I get my body behind my punches so that it's not just a jab, it is a jab with your entire body. When I kick someone, I kick with my entire being, not just with your foot. So this is teaching us how to assimilate and put together our body together with the weapon that we're using to get maximum power with speed and reach. So here we have that. Tai Sabaki, this is what I was talking about, about moving your feet, how to get out of the way of attacks. It's a chessboard, it's a matrix, you can see it physically. When you train long enough, the timing, the ma'ai, the distancing will come in time. And we talk about different ways of walking, you moving sideways, ushiro, mai, to the front. Tora oruki, how to move forward. Juji oruki, how to cross the opponent's attack. Mogurigata, how to duck underneath attacks, spring back up and defeat them. Really cool things. 
I hope I'm not boring you so far. So this is fantastic. It's only seven in the morning here. And I'm so excited to show you this because um, it's what I live for. Taihinjutsu, how do you dodge a sword? How do I get my body out of the way of different things and going back to Kamai? The way to jump from a spear attack or something like that. We try to cover it all. You can't just have unarmed fighting. Fighting of the samurai was about weaponry. It was about battlefield. It wasn't a sport. It was literally, literally life or death. And I'm so thankful to all of our ancestors who brought us this stuff that we can access nowadays in this century. They died to bring us these principles. They came back from the battlefield. Ten went out, one came back. Here's what I learned to do to survive. Are they perfect? Heck no. There's some stuff on this chart that I think is really outdated, semi-ridiculous, and I don't mean that in a mean way. It's just what the heck were they thinking with this movement? So our job as teachers, as stewards of Budo, is to take this old stuff from the 14th, 15th, 16th century, etc., and try to make it into a modern day world. How do I use this out there when I'm shopping at Walmart? How do I use this to protect my family? We're not on a battlefield anymore, but we can still take these principles to live life fully. So we have the Kihon Hapo. Oh my gosh, the Shoshin Gokei, also called Gogyo. These are how you move your body when someone's attacking you. How do I get footwork and distancing? This here is one of the cores of this particular martial arts system. If I said the entire chart, which I will, this is the most important part right here. It, it's pieces and aspects of how you move your body to survive. So you have chi, sui, ka, food, kuno, kata. A lot of stuff just in those particular five movements. The kihon hapo, the fundamental eight movements, which is actually infinite when you think about it. The sanpo no kata. This is now moving your feet even more. Torite go. Uh, different types of reversals when someone grabs you. Torite. Omote gyaku. Ura gyaku. Hon gyaku. Muso dori. Gan sekinagi. Musha dori. Onikudaki. is on and off the ground. All of these are different things that we do with our body to defend ourselves against grapples and punches and even kicks. Let's look at this part here. I know it's hard to see. Kyusho. Kyusho means vital or weak point of the body and pressure points, all of those things. Pressure points don't always work, but we went over every single one of these 60 different pressure points. There are more than 60, but to memorize 60 took me years. So all of these movements, we took an hour on each class every Tuesday and did one of these. What is the weak point of the opponent that we can hit to knock them down, knock the wind out of them, give them pain compliance so that we can do something even more devastating? These are not death touches, dim mock type of stuff, that ridiculous thing that make the ninja uh, kind of the butt of some jokes. This is just weaknesses of anatomy. This is where you study anatomy understanding the different parts of the body that can be affected by a punch, kick, headbutt, whatever you think. Any of these here are good to know as just another tool in our tool belt. So the Q show took us 60 weeks to go through. Many, many, many weeks. Hoken Judopo, the 16 treasured fists of the ninja and samurai. All of these different strikes here, so many to learn. Impossible to master them all. Fudo ken, shuto boshi, shishitan, how to use your fingers, how to scratch like a tiger. Uh, striking with your knee, striking with your foot, striking with your heel, striking with your head, using a slap to attack somebody. How to attack with the knuckles of your fingers, every single one of them. How to attack with your elbows. How to bite and scratch and tear. How to destroy limbs with what you have anatomically. So all of these treasured fists probably came from Chinese martial arts and developed in Japan. It's kind of the same when you think about it. China and Japan are so intertwined even though they battled for years. The martial arts from India, China, Japan, all of those areas, they're kind of just a melting pot. And these carry over into the Japanese culture from hundreds of years ago. But we practice these literally every day on the mat. Last night, we practice on targets of different sizes to condition the body, not only to take pain so when you get punched you just laugh it off, but how to deliver pain in these different areas of the Kyusho. So, the Ten Ryaku no Maki is 
what you do to targets and people before you really are actually combating and fighting. Let's slide over to the Chi Ryaku. Now, people from all over ask us, is this all you study at your dojo or do you do other things? We have an entire curriculum that has very little to do with this. This is the modern curriculum book that I wrote several years ago and we revise it every couple of years. This is kind of like this chart in a very, very modern form. This is based off of the martial art Toshin Do, which I also study. But it is this stuff, but much more streamlined, much more adapted to modern attacks because some of this does not address modern attacks that you'd see on the street hook punches, ground fighting, jujitsu, things like that. So this is a modern curriculum book that's 80 pages long that is on top of this. This is the primary thing we study here at the dojo. This is secondary. This is something we do a couple days a week, but we do this five days a week. This is our curriculum. Tons of stuff in here. This is enough as a solid system of self-defense and martial arts to last, last 10 times in a life. This stuff is even deeper. You know, when I studied other martial arts, I always felt something was lacking somewhere. And that's, that's a common thing, I think, in all martial arts. You'll agree, whatever art you study, they have strengths and they have weaknesses. Same with this. I found some of the stuff wasn't as realistic as I wanted it to be. But as a total package in martial arts, I've never found another martial art of all the ones I studied since I was 10 that had anything even close to the depth of this. Not even close. The sport martial arts I did, even the Okinawan styles, I loved them all, but this was literally like the deepest ocean. I can't explain how deep it was. It was like I was swimming in a shallow pond half my life, and then I discovered this and I just fell into the deep end. And I'm still learning every single day at age 54, still learning every single day from this chart and st things like this. That's why teachers are so important. Let's go over the Chi Ryaku no Maki very, very quickly. Let's close in. All right, here we have the Chi Ryaku no Maki. Chi, as you know, means earth. Chi is earth. Now, if I was designing this chart, I would have put Chi first. Then I would have put mankind, heaven. But everything in Japan is like left to right, upside down, very confusing to a Western mind. So the Chi, the earth, is in the center of the chart. This part of the chart is where you kind of start to fight against another person. You learn timing and distancing and how to do things to defend yourself. Armor, samurai, battle. So here we go with the hajitsu kyuho, aite, kumu kokoro gamai. These are different ways when the body is attacked, the nine different methods of destroying the body, how to free yourself from grasps and grapples. Someone's trying to choke you, they're trying to attack you. How do I free my hands and my body? How do I destroy someone's fingers? How do I crush their kicks? How do I crush their spirit? How do I break their arm? These are the different ways of doing that. There are nine methods here that we went over in class. But again, each of these has so much more to it that I can't possibly explain to you now unless you're on the mat with us going through it in depth. Because what we'll do is we'll take something like Tai Hodoki, how to free the body. And for an hour, we go over how that works, but then we take notes on it, we um, ask questions, we have what ifs, what if the guy does this, if someone is a shorter person or an older person, how do I make this stuff work against someone who's six foot four, 300 pounds? How am I gonna do that? So we have to, take all of these and interpret them with the different questions that students and teachers ask. So we have that section there. The Torite Kihon, these are different types of grabs that people do, uh, sitting techniques, the different pins that you do on the ground, the Jowan Ori using the Hanbo, uh, Suwarigata Ichigeki, these are different techniques that you get into to get to the ground. We have the Omote Gatame, the Uragatame, which are different pins you can do to hold a person down and subdue them when they're on their back or they're on their stomach. This took a long time to get through. There's a lot of really cool what we call finishes on here. As a matter of fact, we did a DVD called Ninjutsu Tap Outs. These are different types of tap outs that the samurai would use in armor to defeat the opponent. Obviously on the battlefield, you just take your tanto out and you kill them. 
that's the way it is. Not a sport. It's uh, I have 10 more people coming at me. I need to dispatch of that one and move on. This was brutal stuff. Hapokeri Henka. So this is dealing with moving your body to do different things to, the, to their body, how to use your legs, different directions, how to move your body. Kapi, konpi, jumonji, kerisukui, ashidome, hito, different movements pulled from the different ryuha, teaching us how to move your feet in different directions to defeat the opponent. Gyaku waza, gyaku is to overturn or reverse something. So these techniques are showing you how to take the opponent's kuzushi, how to take his balance, how to lock up the joints, how to break the wrist and the elbows and the shoulders. So you've had many things that you're familiar with, omote gyaku, uh, you have ura hon gyaku, all the different onikudakis, the breaking the devils, omote ura, you have mushadori, how to capture the warrior, how to grapple with their arms at close distance, type of kumi uchi distance, how do I, I can't hit, I can't kick, we might have swords on, but he's grabbing me, he's got my whole being, how do I manipulate my arms and legs to damage the opponent in their joints? Musodori, ogyaku, so many concepts on here. You could spend a year just on these nine different movements here, and it's incredible amount of information. This is where like modern jiu-jitsu comes from. This is much older. This is the roots of the tree. Budo, warrior arts, are the roots of all martial arts. And then you have stems that come off it. Stems from the 17th, 18th, 19th century, like Aikido, uh, jiu-jitsu, karate, all these come from Budo. They're just kind of a little bit more modern versions. Nagewaza. When I did karate for years, we only had a couple of different throws, but the nagewaza here are designed, being a smaller person, which the Japanese people were and are, you need to be able to masterfully take someone's opponent, someone's balance, by using subtle movements. It's not about strength, it's not about speed. In nagewaza, we discover how to take the opponent by practicing hundreds of times these different types of throws. Again, many of these you have heard of from perhaps judo. If you do sport judo, you've heard of uchimata, hanegoshi, takit otoshi, haragoshi, osotogake, osotonage, tomoe nage, temakura, guruma, yokonagare, tachinagare, ryusui iki. There's so many principles built in here, and I've added some to this chart, like ukiwaza, these floating techniques that weren't necessarily in here. There's only a dozen throws here because on the battlefield there was nothing fancy, no high kicking, no fancy seoe nages over your back because you were wearing heavy armor with big spears and swords, so this was difficult to do. So this was the maximum efficiency with the smallest person possible. How do I get the opponent into the mud to take out my tanto and dispatch? That's what this is about. Henka Uzumaki here, Seiwe Nage, one-handed, two-handed versions, Kuki Nage, how to use kind of this air throw here, Uzumaki, how to turn like a tornado and throw the opponent with your body and momentum using energy, which is what Aikido is based off of. Really, really cool stuff. This is what's so cool is it's like all the martial arts that you might have heard of from movies and books and things that, that might be in your hometown is in here. It's in here. It's just an older version. And each one of these sections can be extracted into an entire martial system. Chimewaza, how do I learn how to choke someone out, take their air, take their blood from their supply? And then how do I learn how to get out of chokes that are being applied to me? Body joke, body chokes, triple-sided chokes, pain chokes, reversal chokes, principal chokes, using the gi against the opponent, using their hoodie against them, their t-shirt, or if they have no, nothing on, how to use blood chokes and things like that to, uh, we'll say legally, take someone out. Keriwaza. Here, the different types of kicking maneuvers that we use. You have to have strong legs in Budo, so this builds strength and muscle. It teaches you about distance. It teaches you how not to always be up here, but to be from the waist down to defend yourself. So these are fantastic principles here of how to use ashi, your legs, how to use your knees, how to use your feet, 
how to uh, break the knees of the opponent, to kick their hips and to break their balance, to trip them, to stomp on their foot in self-defense. All these keriwaza here and how to also destroy them. And I've added again like here, mikazuki, like a crescent kick. That's not in budo because in armor it would make no sense to lift your big heavy leg up to the opponent where they could grab it or they could kick you or you'd fall because it was wet on the battlefield with mud and blood and things like that. You were out of the snow. So to do some sort of high kick to the head is extremely impractical in the clothing that they wore and the armor that they wore. But we do practice that because it's just a cool, fun kick. So we added that in. How y'all doing so far? Are you having fun with this? Are you bored out of your skull? Or are you completely fascinated like I am with it? This, I feel like we are like Indiana Jones and we find this treasure here. And it's our job to dig deeper and research it and try to find all of the little secrets and life principles that are hidden in here. It's unbelievably exciting to me to wake up every single morning, get here to the dojo and research this stuff. Researching the kanji, researching the Japanese, trying to figure out what it means in English and then put it together here for myself and our students. So here we are in the Jin Ryaku no Maki. As you can see here, we wrote the dates for every class that we did this year having to do with each line of this. So we started on January 17th of this year, 2023. Of course, you'll be seeing this video in the future. We started with Ichigeki, Suwari Gata. Suwari is when you are sitting down on the ground. You have to remember that the uh, Chinese, Japanese, other cultures toward the east sit on the ground a lot. They don't have the furniture that we have now. Therefore, their legs are stronger, more flexible. So you have to learn how to sit in Seiza, Fudoza, Hanza no Kamai, different, different ways of sitting so that you can get up quickly. Most samurai movies you've seen, they're sitting down in Seiza, they have their swords or whatever. They need to get up quickly to defend themselves. So it made sense to have a box here on how to defend yourself when you're sitting down, you're not standing. You're attacked from behind when you're doing something with your family, eating. Even eating, they sat at a table on the ground. So suari got to here, really good techniques. Torite gata are when you're grabbed here, different ways of defending yourself. All these different katas here are pulled from the six of the nine lineages. Atenage, Seto, Shizen, Koki, Soto, Ransetsu, Hito, Jigoku, Toshi, Hoteki, Yumi, Makura, Fudo. All these are different ways to defend someone punching you, kicking you. How do I move my body? And wreck the other person. Shime gaeshi, how do I reverse chokes? I talked about that earlier. These are different ways when someone attacks you from behind. So someone sneaks up, gets you in a bear hug, over the arms, under the arms, they get you in a, a rear naked choke, a harakajime or something like that. How do I use my body, my taijutsu to move and defend myself? It's exciting stuff. Hard to be grabbed when you're big like me, but if you're a small person, this scares a lot of people, especially if you're out in your car, putting your groceries away, and all of a sudden someone comes up to you and tries to assault or take you or push you in the car. How do you get out of that situation? This box here helps us with that. Ski, kerigata, someone's kicking or punching you. These are the basics, kind of soup and nuts of the attacks. So remember in the Jin Ryaku, Jean means mankind. So this is when man to man, so to speak, person to person is trying to kill you. How do I defend myself? So we're taking these parts of the chart and putting these pieces together into these kata, these waza here. These are the puzzle pieces. These are your Legos. Now over here, you have the Bob Ross. You're gonna create something out of this and put it all together. And what we often do is we take principles of these and we show where were the old pieces to build these. Last night we did Kata Ure Tonso no Gata from the Togakure Ryu, the Hidden Door School. Tonso means how to escape. So the ninja, if you remember the shinobi, were not powerful like the samurai. Samurai was wearing armor, they had the numbers, they had the better equipment, superior weaponry. So the shinobi's job was to escape. It wasn't to fight someone in armor, it was how to get the heck out of Dodge when I have my information. I've learned about the castle, I have to report back to my master, I have to escape 
this giant warrior coming at me. So the tonso no kata are one of the few techniques in the togakure ryu where you use taijutsu to get the heck out of there. So this was a fun one. But as you can see, what I did here last night was December 12th. So we took that kata, ure tonso no kata, the single arm escaping form. And what I did is I, of course, I translate the kanji so that the students know where this comes from. And then, as you, as you can see here, I wrote so many moving parts in this one movement, which is right here. So this blown out is this. These are the principles that I found as a teacher inside of this one movement. This kata ure tonsu no kata, look at all the parts. You have ura take ori in it. You have hani aruki, which is like this skip hopping movement. You have moguri, how to submerge your body. You have a soku gyaku strike. You have a soki ken strike. You have a katate nage throw is built into this technique. You have yoko aruki footwork in this technique. It's similar to ate nage, which is another kata from another school. You could do shiho nage from this movement if you went ura or omote on the inside or outside of the attack. So as you can see, every week when we have this, we blow this up to find the parts from here and assemble them in this one technique. So we continued our journey all through this year. This is the fourth, almost the fourth year. We've been doing this chart, I can't believe this, for nearly four years straight. Four years to get through this one piece of giant paper on the wall. And this is what amazes me is this budo is so unbelievably deep that it can take you decades to go over this a couple of times. And your job as a budoka is to start at the beginning and stay on the path and not vary. Because what people want to do with our ego is we want to go up here to the cool, hard techniques, the really high level stuff. We don't want to bother with the basics because we think that's below us. No, in order to get this chart in the right way and to understand the movements, to delve into the nine lineages, you need to do this in order the way that Hatsumi designed it, stacking on top of each other. You don't start with the ceiling and the roof of a building. You start with what? That's right, the foundation. You build the foundation, the ten noryaku. You build the first floor, the second floor. You get your windows and doors in, and then you put your roof on. And then you have a complete fighting system that's unmatched, in my opinion. Now. We continue in our journey all through the spring and the summer. We get into the Nage Kaishi. This is when someone's trying to throw you in Judo and how to counter that, how to roll out, which goes back to Tai Jitsu and goes back to uh, Ukemi. So we learn how to be thrown and how to recover from that so that we're not damaged. So all of these principles are samurai ways of mm, reversing someone's attack on you by trying to throw you to the ground. We try to be solid as we can with our body. What if you're attacked from behind? Move these over, as you can see. Haibuyori, someone sneaking up from behind, different ways of stomping on their foot, kicking their groin, um, blowing out their ACL with a stomp kick, all of these different methods here. Mutodori gata, mutodori is when you don't have a weapon. Mu is emptiness, to is a blade in this case, dori is to capture. Muto Dori more than just myself against someone with a katana coming at me. Muto Dori represents, I have no weapons. What am I going to do now? I need to be skilled enough, in general, to dodge something that's coming at me. What if the guy has a spear or he shoots a pistol from 20 yards at me? How am I going to move and try to survive? What this chart is teaching us is how to increase our odds of survival. It's not about getting trophies or rank or meaningless things like that. It's not about money. It's about surviving. Surviving is what Budo is about. And I'm going to finish up with a quote on that. So how to dodge someone coming at you with a sword. In this case, Kanagare, which is this flowing fist, has to do with someone with a knife, a tanto, stabbing at your stomach. How do I get out of the way, destroy the hand, disarm the knife? Do an omote gyaku, take the person down, and finish them off. 
and you have the tonso no kata, which are these cool escaping methods we talked about earlier of the ninja. It involves a little bit more of environmental awareness, how to use your shuriken, how to use uh, metsubushi to blind the opponent with powders and things like that, how to escape. So here we are in December 12th. We did this yesterday, next week, before our Christmas break, which is our only week off every year. I only get one week a year off, and this is when we take a break with our family, but we'll come back in 2024 and finish off this section of the chart by mid-spring. Okay, now we're moving down to the bottom part of the chart, which we have not done yet officially with this, but we do this in what we call weapons class. Every Tuesday, we have a weapons class from seven to eight, where we take a different weapon Usually we switch weapons out every couple of weeks or months, depending on what it is, and we go over parts of this. This is called Buki Waza. Buki means like weapon, and Waza is like a form or a technique. So these are principles of using weaponry. What separates sport from fighting martial arts of the battlefield is weaponry. Martial arts is about warfare. It literally has it in the title, Budo. So Bu of Buki is war. And this has to do with the weapons of the time, the cool stuff like the sword, the spear, the bow and arrow, whatever it might be. These are principles that samurai lived and died for in the battlefield and brought back and wrote down scroll form and oral traditions and they brought us these techniques. What can I learn from weaponry? Oh my gosh, the principles are endless. The life lessons in using weapons are amazing. And of course, you learn how to appreciate life. So over here, hanbo jitsu. The hanbo is the, the half stick. Han is half. So this is what happens if my spear is broken in half. My six foot roku shaku bow breaks. How do I use a smaller stick, like a club or something like that, an umbrella in modern terms? How do I use that to defend myself? So next year, our job is to continue. Well, this will take us about two years. I'm not kidding to do this section. At least two years, if you're talking one week for each line. Bukiwaza is our next goal. We will finish this chart, I'm thinking by 2026. So Hanbo Jitsu, we have all of the different stances of the Hanbo, all of the different movements, the different strikes, the way to move your body with the Hanbo, how to roll with the Hanbo and get up and recover, how to flip it and roll it, how to strike the different targets, the way of moving your body to the inside and the outside of the attack in all of the different, technically 10 directions or at least eight, how to throw with the Hanbo and wrap up arms and destroy limbs with the Hanbo. Then you move here into the Tanto, which is the short, knife of the samurai so the tanto the small knife the different stances that you have the different movements that you have with the tanto how to move your feet and dodge a knife how to get over the fear of that blade because it's very quick and powerful very easily concealed so this is how to do knife defenses and we have of course modern knives are everywhere people carry them in their pockets they're pretty much legal most of the places so we really spend some time here with modern knife defenses. The shoto, which is another name for the wakizashi, the short sword of the samurai, his sidearm, how to use that and how to defend with that. The kunai, the kunai is a spade type of tool that the shinobi used to use to pry open windows and doors, to dig, to leave tracks, to defend themselves. It's like a spade. So the kunai is an unusual weapon that we study here occasionally. Bikenjutsu, which is sword fighting. The biken, the hidden sword. There are so many different types of sword fighting in here from the different lineages that we study. So you see other martial arts that study swordsmanship. This is like that, but it's mostly based not in the Edo period, but before that. So there's not a ton of Iaido in here. It's more Kenjutsu. Uh, it's more fighting with the sword on the battlefield in armor. So all of these techniques here are how to defeat someone when you have your sword and they have theirs. Bojitsu, which is the art of the long staff. Depending on the size of the staff changes the katas, but we have all of the different kamai here, joran, chudan, geiran, ichimonji, these different kamai, how to use your body, how to stand with your staff 
to fight an opponent. And then we do ukemi with the staff, uh, how to sweep the leg with the staff, how to strike the head and the different parts of the body with the staff, all these different ways of hitting the body, how to smash someone's shins, how to poke them in the throat with it, all of these different ski thrusting attacks here, and bono waza, goho, you've heard of that, ura goho, sashi ai, fune barai, ura isoku, all these different long katas of the bow. So down here, you take these parts of the bow, how to use it, how to move your feet, and then you add it into long techniques, which are a series of flows that help us learn how to find space and distance and timing to defeat someone who is putting pressure and really trying to kill you. Jojitsu, those of you who like the jo, it's a fantastic weapon, probably the primary one of the primary two or three weapons of Aikido. So how do I use a medium stick, a medium staff to defend myself? And they are different techniques depending on the length of the stick. The yari, the massive spear of the warrior. How do I use this giant six, seven, ten foot pole with a blade on the end of it to defend myself and to defend my family and my community? So all the stances of the spear, and then we have eight different techniques of the spear called yari no waza. And there are many more weapons that we add to this chart. For instance, this chart doesn't talk about like short little sticks like a keychain called kubotan. So we use a kubotan, we use shuriken which aren't on here, we use the kusari fundo, the different flexible weapons of the samurai, hojutsu, you name it, we try to study it here. So we want our students and practitioners to have an overall skill set in different types of weapons. And that is not on here, but we also include firearms. That's extremely important in modern day America where I live. How do I use a pistol, shotgun, long rifle? How do I use these things? How do I disassemble them? How do I hit the target in the center mass? I, you have to go to a range and you have to practice firearms as part of this. How foolish would it be to learn all these but not learn how to carry a firearm and I have a license to carry firearm license so there are different things that you can do we talk about the legal aspects of this what do I do if uh, I defend myself with a firearm what's gonna happen to me am I gonna go to jail we have law enforcement officials that help us with this with the laws of our state and where you live and of course that changes depending on where you live so we have the buki waza other martial arts I did did not have weaponry we also even do like the Sai the Kama, things like that. We don't do Nunchiku, those are, those are kind of Okinawan weapons, but they have a place. They're in Japan, so we do practice those. What we, what we say to our students is we're not doing weapons class, we are doing Taijutsu with weapons. And what that does is it keeps us focused on the body and the footwork versus whatever tool I'm holding. That's not as important as moving your body. Isn't this chart a bit overwhelming? It really can be, but we start one day, one hour, one moment at a time. We go through this as a group. Perhaps you delve into this chart in your particular dojo, and then we try our best to interpret it, to respect it, and then to take it and translate it into the 21st century where we can use this in more modern day practical attacks. I want to read to you something which is the essence of what I'm showing here in this Tenshi Jin chart. This is one of the first things I learned as a teenager was the concept of Bufu Ikan. Bufu Ikan is one of the many sayings in the Bujinkan and some Japanese martial arts. Here it is on page 36 of the book which is called Unarmed Fighting Techniques of the Samurai. This is one of my copies here. It's all destroyed and the um, dust cover is not on it anymore. So the book is very hard to find. It's way out of print. But on page 36, Hatsumi Sensei talks about Bufu Ikan and how we can use that in the spirit of Budo and martial arts to keep us alive. Bufu Ikan roughly translate, translates as the martial winds blow every day. This is about survival. When you think of the martial winds blow every day, Bufu Ikan, what I think of, and there's many interpretations, let's read his first. Bufu Ikan, he writes, and I'm paraphrasing here, I'm not going to read the whole thing. 
There is an expression that is key to the martial philosophy called bufu ikan, martial way. In my experience, in the case of an artist's life, whether their art be ballet, music, or you're a painter, if a professional takes even a few days off, the next time they perform, it's difficult to get that lost time back within the space of kukan. With time off from training, you fail to recognize your own inability. How true is that? When I take time off from training, even a few days, I don't feel as whole, I don't feel as purposeful. You feel lethargic, you feel disconnected, you feel like life is getting difficult. Issues and pressures and negative things seem to seep into your mind and your body very, very quickly when you leave the path of Budo and you leave the path of movement when the winds of martial arts are not blowing through your life. And Hatsumi continues, the repetition of daily training leads to the way of a great warrior. He says, I often heard Takamatsu Sensei speak of the heart of the martial artist and of perversion on the martial way. And when I run into a wall, those expressions answer with the grace of heaven. How cool is that? So Bufu Ikan is the way. It's the way to seek joy and fulfillment through the martial arts. If, if the winds keep blowing, there are gonna be times in our life where we have to leave this chart. I've had students that started with me three, four years ago and are no longer with us. And then we have students that have been here for 17 years, 16 years. What makes them different? The Bufu Ikan. They see that life's purpose is this is one vehicle toward happiness. There are many in life, but the community that you get when you come and train at your dojo, you come and train with like-minded professional people who are positive, who are not trying to tear you down, but they're riding through life, learning the secrets. They're open-minded. They want to learn in advance. They're not going to tear people down. They're, no, they're not jealous. They're not envious. We're here to check our ego at the door and to just learn from people who are long gone. Our sensei, sensei means someone who has lived before you. All of the wisdom of these techniques of these endless warriors that have brought us this must be respected, appreciated, and continued. I'm just a steward, that's all I am in my short life is to take this material and keep it from dying, to keep the wind blowing, the bufu, the martial arts, ikan. My job, as well as several of you out there that do this full time as a profession, our job is to take this and give it to the kids, give it to the children and show them how to be strong people, how to take care of themselves and their family and, and not be a victim, but a victor. There's a whole mindset that's built into this. This is about survival. Budo is about survival and hopefully helping the world, giving back to the world, compassion, helping the world thrive. So survival and thriving to joy and happiness is why I set myself on this path decades ago. I'm still learning every single day. The winds are still blowing. And hopefully, wherever you live, you can join at least a small part of this in your community. Let us take this Ten Chi Jin chart and put it into our lives, put it into our morale system, our morals and ethics, and build a powerful self-defense system that can save our life as well the lives of those we love. Thank you so much for taking this several year journey with us. And if you haven't started, find a school where you live, find something, get a book, get a video, go online. It's better than nothing. If you find that the winds of your life have kind of stirred and slowed down a little bit and you're feeling kind of without purpose, a little bit lonely, something like a martial art will help you. It helps lift me when things get rough, when times get tough, and when I feel down and kind of a bit selfish, it forces us into a community of happy people that will help bring us up. Budo is not about punches and kicks and taking the life of an opponent or holding a cool sword. It's about survival. It's about how to live and how to maximize our days here on Earth. And remembering that each and every single day, we can learn something new. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time. Enjoy your day and night wherever you live, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.